Currently, ecological agriculture is being developed in a positive direction with many diverse models in line with Vietnam's agricultural situation. As a result, farmers can produce more clean products of high quality to meet the demand for food and also generate income, improve family life. However, the market of ecological agricultural products is underdeveloped. The agroecological products has not yet brought the best value to farmers, so that each community deploying the model of ecological agriculture should be developed in a comprehensive way in order to bring the highest benefits to farmers, consumers and the community. Community entrepreneurs are seen as those giving orientation to promote those core values. Greetings from Shanghai, Vietnam on VTC10 Netviet. Agroecological products is a niche market and requires a special enterprising method. So who should be responsible for that? In today's program, we have an interview with Daniel, a business from USA. Thank you, Daniel, for joining our program today. Agroecological products are different. Does it mean that we need a special and different enterprising method for this type of product? With ecological products, there's a couple things in order to bring the products out to market. For example, if we're talking about the enterprise or the entrepreneurial aspect, right, then I think one thing is the concept of an ecological product is something of a niche market, is one. And then two, uh, at least in the market in Vietnam, there's not an existing market yet. So I think in terms of the entrepreneurial spirit, you have to have a mindset that this is not a commodity market, for example. There is no set infrastructure. You need to have uh, the ability to build up the, the market infrastructure to actually accept um, the, the ecological product is one. And I think the big thing too is also you have to be willing to change the mindset of consumers. Um, because if consumers are not able to accept the product, then you're, you're not able to create any sort of a niche. Um, and the third thing is if your goal is to sell at a premium, right, is, is to ensure that the market accepts the product at say a price that is equal to or an organic product, right? If we're, we're going to use that as a benchmark. This time coming to Hương Sơn district in the central province of Hà Tĩnh and working with the local people here, what can you say about the agroecological enterprising method of the farmers in this area? So in terms of my visit to HEPA and talking with the leaders here and even talking to the, the cooperative members and the people who are involved in the network, uh, I think Agroecological enterprising is, is actually very important. I think it's actually something that's very needed, especially in the context of the world today where food security is a big issue, food safety is another big issue. Then really the, the, the crux of what we're dealing with in the 21st century is, is sustainability, right? Is how do you uh, maintain this idea of economic growth in the context of sustainability, um, especially in the context of natural resource use. So I think agroecological enterprise seeks to find a balance um, between not only sustainable use of natural resources, but at the core of it is changing fundamentally our values and our morals, how humans interact and live and are in relationship with nature. And from that develops a potential enterprise, right, as we define it today as a trade or, uh, or an exchange of money. So what is the role of the community entrepreneur in this regard? So I think uh, the, the role of an agro ecological entrepreneur is very important. So for example, because uh, like we said earlier, right, agroecological products or agroecological entrepreneurial development is something relatively new, right? Even in the West, we, we think we're always trying to strive towards something that maintains a balance between sustainability, economic development, all that kind of stuff, right? So I think the, the main role of an agroecological entrepreneur is, is essentially one, is to pioneer the field, is to develop it, and and you know, and three is to really tackle the actual practical issues. So it's it's really involved in this kind of a dialectic where we have this theory, right, of agroecological enterprise. We want it to, to maintain core values, and then have the the, the balance between in uh, the market and and kind of how do our values interact with the market as it is today, even on the global scale. Born and raised in the forest, the love for nature 
plants and animals has gradually grown up in the heart of Trần Quốc Việt, an ecological farmer in Hương Sơn District, Hà Tĩnh Province. Witnessing the destruction of forests for cultivating land, Việt felt a pain for the pristine forests of his homeland. From the experience and wisdom, he has connected with the local farmers to form a network in order to urge people to develop sustainable ecological farming method in association with indigenous knowledge. After years of development, ecological agriculture model here has achieved encouraging results. Many farmers are from the Central Highlands, Northwest, Laos, Cambodia, etc. have come here to learn how to do ecological farming. Thì sau khi mình chia sẻ được cái này thì đồng bào các dân tộc đã có ý thức hơn trong cái quản lý bảo vệ rừng và bảo vệ cái nguồn nước đông nguồn. Cái thứ hai là đồng bào cũng đã tiếp tục lưu giữ và phát huy những cái là kiến thức bản địa trong sản xuất nông nghiệp sinh thái, trong chăn nuôi, trong trồng trọt, rồi là trong là sử dụng các cái loài cấy để phục vụ làm thuốc nám, rồi là các cái món ăn truyền thống của dân tộc. Tính vì cái lẽ đó cho nên là 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 cũng được bà con là hăng hải tham gia. Most of the young people coming here are from the ethnic minorities. Everyone is born from the forest and has a certain understanding of soil, water, agricultural methods. Listening to the sharings of Viet and the local farmers, they have become more aware of the preservation and protection of forests, promotion of traditional knowledge in agriculture to develop their villages. Trong cái phạm vi này ấy, thì tôi muốn 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 trở thành một cái doanh nghiệp hay nói hơn chắc đáng hơn là một cái doanh nhân để mà đưa những cái sản phẩm nông nghiệp sinh thái của bà con làm được để giới thiệu cho thị trường để người ta hiểu được cái giá trị của cái sản phẩm nông nghiệp sinh thái và người ta hiểu được cái giá trị của cái tài nguyên thiên nhiên và môi trường và hiểu được cái giá trị những cái sản phẩm trong rừng cung ứng cho xã hội nó tốt như thế nào nó có lời cho sức khỏe ra làm sao cái mong muốn này để làm gì để cho đồng bào chúng ta có một cái niềm tin và thứ hai nữa là cũng có một cái cơ hội để đưa ra giới thiệu với thị trường để để tạo ra được cái giá trị sản phẩm của đồng bào dân tộc để rồi là nâng cái giá trị sản phẩm lên nhằm cải thiện cái cuộc sống của đồng bào giúp đồng bào trong cái việc mà xóa đói giảm nghèo rồi là đồng thời cũng là nâng cao đời sống của họ. Currently, agroecological model has been replicated in many places in Hà Tĩnh. Farmers come to Rao An Cooperative of Mr. Viet to learn about farming. After a period, many farmers also achieved initial success. Cái hướng đi như ông Việt với tôi trước đang làm á, thì cũng đã có cái ý nghĩ với ý tưởng này rồi. Ý tưởng làm thế nào mà cùng nhân dân vì mình ở sống ở thiên nhiên làm thế nào mà bảo tồn được thiên nhiên và tạo lập cái cuộc sống sinh kế cho người dân ở đấy có đủ các yếu tố để mà cùng yếu cái rừng yếu cái đất này để mà bảo vệ và phải sản xuất sản xuất để phát triển. From the practical experience after many years of working in the forest, Mr. Viet has successfully guided the development of local agriculture and helped people develop stable livelihood. Farmers not only feed themselves, but also sell the agricultural products of high quality to the market at reasonable prices. Moreover, native forests have been restored, a vast green spread across the homeland. It is also the common design of the community entrepreneurs as Mr. Viet. In the previous reportage, we mentioned Mr. Viet, who is considered the community entrepreneur who helped the local people here develop the livelihood based on agroecological farming method. So what do you think about him? So I think uh, Bac Viet is, after interacting with him, I think he's actually a very good example of an agro, um, you know, agro -eco ecological entrepreneur even to go further is a community entrepreneur, right? Community-based entrepreneur. And I think this is really crucial because one, of course, the, the most obvious is his core values are very much community-based. He's 
and not only that, he's also got the agroecological -eco component where he really does value uh, the value and the relationship between humans and nature. He's not willing to compromise that, one, and that's very important. But then two, what's really important as well is he shows the potential of this theory to be applicable to most anyone regardless of your educational or your, your, your background, period, right? Um, this is not an exclusive uh, ideology theory or even kind of a job description where you have to have an MBA or you have to have some sort of certain specialized degree, but this is something that's relevant across class, racial, and uh, just overall economic background. So I think that's what Bakviet kind of embodies is, is kind of the layman terms that, or the layman relevance that this, this, this concept really has and the applicab applicability um, that this theory has and kind of the ability to, of, of someone who has absolutely no formal training in, economic, um, in, the, in economics can actually utilize this theory to actually develop it, to actually develop, say, an agro, uh, agroecological enterprise. And what skills do you think are necessary for the community entrepreneur? I think there's a couple things. One is we're talking about um, it's a different sort of planning, right? Um, you know, as, as, as always, farmers do have to plan, but I think one of the things that we have to, to, to deal with is, one is this is planning on a little bit of a different scale or a different kind of mindset. So we talk about expansion, expansion capital, things like that. I mean, it also talks about farming can, also, can sometimes be a little bit insular in essence, right? So I think the, the essence of the entrepreneurial aspect is you have to be in relationship, in, um, in exchange with markets, right? Which is beyond just, just your farm. So I think that's the other skill is how do you actually understand what people want, the mindset of consumers now, and then being someone that's, that's a community-based uh, entrepreneur is how do you synthesize that and balance that with community benefits and then also with your core values, making sure that the market doesn't change you, but you understand the market in order to change the market, for example. Vietnam is now taking a deeper step into the regional and the world economy. What directions do you think the community entrepreneurs should follow? Community entrepreneurs are very, uh, very important because I think where we stand right now in, in the 21st century is we are standing on the brink of what I would consider, um, you know, the, the relatively the failures or the shortcomings of unregulated market capitalism, right? Um, that has kind of, uh, kind of put, say, community well-being, economic, um, so community well-being and environmental uh, sustainability at kind of the back seat of economic development. So we are at the point in society now where, say, we've generated countless amounts of, of, of economic wealth for, for a very few amount of people. So how do we actually recenter and change that, that system so that we can actually center the well-being of community and the environment instead of just, you know, economic development, for example. And finally, do you think that the ultimate responsibility of the community entrepreneurs resides in the environmental protection and the social development? Yeah, so I think that the responsibility of a community entrepreneur is exactly that. They are responsible for the development of society. And I think the societal development, right, is not exclusive of uh, environmental stewardship. Right, and I think, contrary, I think we need to redefine what societal development or even economic development or even what progress really means, right? And I think progress is often conflated with this idea of modernization and urbanization, which comes at the expense, usually, of environmental quality. And it, it, it creates all these other issues, such as inequality and things like that. Once again, thank you, Danielle, for joining our program today and for your meaningful sharings. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. And that's all we have for today's program. For comment and feedback, don't hesitate to write to us at strengthvietnam at netvietv.net. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now. <laughs>